<laughs> okay, let's just make sure everything is up and running here. Let's see. Do, do, do. Looks like so. Let's just see here. Okay, let's just make I think so. Here. Let's see. Listening on the loop. Looks like so. Let's just see. Yep, okay, cool. Let's go back to Photoshop. All right, so uh, what we're going to be doing today is um, taking a look at how to do the process of cutting out um, the panes and the layers from each one of the, uh, well, panes from the comic book Omega One, and uh, how you can set it up so that we can do the motion combat animation and our director can do all that stuff in Premiere Pro and all the After Effects and all the other things. So um, you don't have to have Photoshop. You can use GIMP, G-I-M-P. Both Photoshop and GIMP are Mac and PC. GIMP is free. If you've already got the Creative Cloud package or even CS5, CS6, you can still do this in an old version of Photoshop, which is totally, totally fine because we're not going to be using any kind of advanced work uh, any advanced tools at all. This is very, very basic, very, very old school Photoshop stuff because we're doing a very, very old school kind of process. So let's begin. I'm going to switch us over to the screen here. All right, so I'm here in uh, Adobe Photoshop, so, and this is the most up-to-date one, but again, this will work in uh, Photoshop or GIMP. I'm going to go New. And uh, actually, no, that's not what I'm, I'm going to open the file and you're going to get something that looks similar to this. This is uh, issue five right now. You're going to be seeing, <coughs> excuse me, the colors um, of each page. And I'll just show you there's page one. Hello. There's two. And what we're trying to do is uh, not just cut out the panes, but also cut out foreground elements from background elements. And we're going to look at that here. We're just going to look at the last page. I'm going to right click and open in Photoshop. And uh, this will bring up the whole full res picture uh, of the last pane, page 20 of issue five. We're gonna zoom in here to this very first pane. You can see this is a very, very complex image. And when we want, what we wanna be able to do and provide for our director is the ability to separate the background elements, which is all this stuff kind of here. Uh, oops, hold on, let me show you. This kind of, this stuff, these tanks, these guys up here, these, this, this person would be a little bit more background, but we might want to cut them out. But certainly tanks, this stuff here, um, basically this kind of area and this kind of area, and certainly the ground. And then the, the foreground elements that we want to keep would be these two folks here, these two folks here, these two folks here, and maybe as a separate element there. So these areas we want to cut out from the background. We don't just want to cut them out, however. We want to be able to, as you'll see once we do this cutout procedure, we want to be able to give, them a give the animators a little leeway from the background, and we're going to do a little repainting. So the process will go cut out. We're going to make a new layer. We're going to do a little repainting, and, uh, and that's it. Um, so the first thing we have to do is actually cut the paint out. We used to do we do this on the full page, but it just became too unwieldy in the editing program. So what we do is we cut out each pane, and that's pretty easy. You just find, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. That's here, M for Photoshop. I'm just going to go in the bottom right corner here. I'm going to include the black. You can see that I'm selecting almost all of it here, that I'm cutting off a little of it's okay. Uh, in fact, we might just take all of it here. That's why we use the other corner so we can make sure we get all of it. That there's a little bit of overlay or down here is no problem at all. And we're going to go copy. And you, I like to use key commands, but I'll just show you what I'm doing here. From there, we're going to say new. And what Photoshop does, GIMP may not do this, but Photoshop will allow you to make a new version uh, of your pick, uh, a new document from their clipboard just here. And you can see the dimensions are correct. We're going to say create. And then under the title, we're going to call this Issue 5, Page 1, Pane 1. So you're going to see I5P1P1, which means Issue 1, Pane 1, or Page 1, Pane 1. We go Create. You get a blank document, and then we're going to go Paste. We've already pasted it from before. Bang. There it is, frame for frame. Um, pixel for pixel. 
And this will be what the editors use. And so everything we do has to stay within this pane. We don't want to add other layers from another file. Every element we want them to be able to access will stay in here. Now, how do we cut them out? Well, we go to this, which is the magic lasso tool. Now, you may not have the la magic lasso tool available. Something may have happened to your edit, your uh, whatever toolbar. If so, you're going to go to edit. Oops, let me go back here. You're going to go to edit. Hello. You're freaking out on me now. Okay. Yeah, I know. You're freaking out. Everybody's mad. There we go. Edit toolbar. And under the toolbar, you're going to look over here for magic lasso. For example, this might be over here, and now you wouldn't see it. So you would say, in the toolbar, so you would say magic lasso, you would drag it over here to the lasso folks, click done, and now it will reappear. And you can put it anywhere you want for that matter. What the magic lasso does, I'm going to zoom in using command or control plus, and then using H for the hand tool, so we can zoom around. We want to be able to cut out this is this girl and this guy together. They're actually connected. We want to be able to cut out on the edges. And there's some automatic things that Photoshop does, but they're really cumbersome. And it's really just easier to be able to do it by hand. Um, it's just, I know you're like, well, shouldn't they have something that works? Well, they do, but it doesn't really work. So we click the magic lasso tool. And what happens is you click, say, at the top of her head. And it really intelligently goes around the edges and we want to always include the black, the outlines. And since we want to include him, I'm also clicking on any form points, like the end of his nose. And when I click, it creates a new little uh, dot, pixel, whatever you want to call it looking thing. And if it gets really hairy in here, I do a lot of clicking. Just because sometimes it isn't totally sure what I want. I come down here to the bottom, we get his collar. We click here. We don't want any of that aqua looking stuff, we're keeping it on the black. I'm going to click here, click here, click here. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom of his jacket. Then we're going to zoom across all the way to her leg, even though, well, let's see. We're going to actually try to cut out his leg. Let's see if we can get this right. That, her, his arm all the way to her belly here, and then we move down. Because now we want to keep her a part of this as well. And I had a little mess up there, but that's okay. We're going to go back and fix that. I'll show you how. Zoom to the other side of her leg because her leg goes out of frame. I'm going to click, go up through her crotch here, and then down the other leg to her knee. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but it definitely gets things in the right mode, in the right place, so that you can edit. And I'm going to cut, I'm going to click across those black areas, otherwise, it'll just zoom in on those black lines. I'm going to go up her back to her shoulders. Click here. We're going to go over her shoulder. We're going to miss that glow. We don't need that glow. We just want her body, her face, her head. Clicking. And as I approach the first click, you see the little zero that happens there. When I click there, I get my selection. And this is, this is actually a really, really... It turned out okay. There's some errors and things, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy. Or actually, I'm going to. Uh, uh, what am I going to do here? I'm going to copy. Yes. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do. What, what, what am I really going to do here? This is a little bit trickier than I had anticipated, but um, I think it'll be all right. We're going to. Hmm. 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 Tell you what. We're going to copy this. And we're going to make a new layer. We go up to layer, new layer. We're going to call this foreground left folks, because you won't know who these people are. I know who they are, but you won't know. Now, if I turn off the background layer, you can still see the selection, but there's nothing in this foreground layer at all. When I hit paste, there's our selection. It's a little rough. It's true. Very true. We go back here and we can see that it actually placed it in a pretty great place, right on top of what we wanted. Now, unfortunately, I should have cut. Oh, well, because I need that to be a hole. Um, but well, what we've, what we've been able to do here 
is now we have the ability to move them separately. Now, of course, I need them to be whole, so I should have cut. How do we solve that? Well, um, I'm going to actually have to <laughs> uh, do something else here, I'm realizing. But um, anyway, um, I'm trying to think what the best way to do this. Yeah, it's probably best to keep this in layers. So that's fine. So to fix my mistake, we're going to do another one of these. Don't worry. And I'll do it correctly this time. Uh, I'm just going to go to this tool. We're going to select everything in here. Everybody here. Just for a second. Well, I don't need to do this. Look, I'll show you. This is going to take me a little while. I got a better idea. Let's do another one. Let's do these folks, these two ladies up here in the front. We're going to do the same thing. With to deselect, you can either go to select and deselect, and all this stuff goes away, or just hit the marquee tool and click anywhere else. So if I've got a selection that I want to get rid of, I can just click anywhere, and it goes away. All right, we're going to do another one. Magnetic lasso tool. I'm going to start on the bottom now. I'm going to go up her leg, around her rump. Her rumpus, kind of cut across her neck. We're going to catch her hair. Now, don't get, you know, it's, it's really easy to keep going down her hair, but we want this lady too because you can see they're connected. We want to catch her collar, this black area. We're going to go around her face. I'm clicking on the bottom of her nose, clicking on the edge of her nose, going around, clicking on her eye socket, wanting to get her hair. It's interpreting everything pretty well. I just click to make sure that it doesn't cause me too much grief. Oops, I got a little too much of that, but we'll fix that in a second. We're going to come all the way down here, like so, all the way across. Now, there's a little space here, which we'll deal with. We'll just kind of go up and around. We'll get the bottom of her pants. We'll go up here. I don't need this. Oh, I do. Actually, that's her arm. Ah, never mind. My mistake. It's all right. We'll fix that in a second. We're going to go to do this. That's somebody else's leg. We go across her chest. Here's her arm. We're going to cause this to be deselected. And then all the way here, we get the circle. And there's our selection. Now, I have a little error here. You can see my problem. Now, it's no problem. We can fix this by going, clicking and holding, and you get the lasso tool, different from the magnetic lasso tool. We do the lasso tool. The lasso tool allows us to add or subtract just freehand, which is cool. So I'm going to zoom in, Command plus. I'm going to hit the H tool, which does not change my selection. And see how some of this is a little jagged? That's no problem. We're going to go to the lasso tool. I hit L. And if you hold down Shift, notice how I get a plus. And if I hold down Alt or Option, I get a minus. So if I do this, look, it makes a deselection. But if I hold down Shift, it makes a happy good selection. So we want to just kind of do this. Now you can do this with the magic lasso tool as well. Now you see how I've filled out my selection, which is lovely. Let's see if there's any other weirdness here. We're going to hold down option and get rid of this bit. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Actually, I'm just going to go like this and then fix it. Freehand. Cool. You don't have to be perfect. This is not perfectionism time. I'm going to shift and get all this in there. Lovely. I'm going to fix my mistake over here, this weirdness. Hold down Option, get rid of that. I want to get rid of this. Oh, I'm, <laughs> no, I want to go Shift. Uh, so funny. There. And then we want to hit Option and get rid of this. And when I let go, it, it zaps up to my first position. This all looks pretty good. All right, now we're going to do what I... what. Oh, wait, one more over here. I'm going to hit H. There's some weirdness back here we want to get rid of. Back to Lasso. I'm hitting L. So we want to select this but deselect some of this nonsense. We don't need the background here or that. And then we'll take this, and the rest of it looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit of her chin. Now I am being a little perfectionistic. And maybe a little of this. And maybe a little of this. And maybe a little of this. And maybe a little of that. Cool. All right, enough of this. All right, so we've got this. I'm going to cut now, and I can use Command-K. Uh, it won't let me cut. The reason is because I want to be on this layer. Whatever layer you're on is the layer you're going to be cutting from, and this 
foreground left folks has no image here. It just has them over there. So it was saying you can't cut nothing. So we have to go back to the original layer. Now we can go cut. Boom, they're gone. Now you can see this blank area, and this is the part that might cause us the most pain, but we'll fix that in a second. I'm going to make a new layer. This will be foreground center, folks. Paste. And notice this time now that there's no selection, it puts it all over the map. So what we got to do is just bring it down. It should pretty well snap to what I want. And I'm just going to use the key commands here so that it kind of snaps back in place. If you look carefully, however, there's little lines. See these little lines that are here? And that indicates that we made a cut, but there's a little spacer. And if the animators wanted to come in and do like, oh, we want these to zoom in, you'd see what happens. You get all this blank junk over here. Well, this is where, oops, this is where the fun part comes in. Well, I guess I have to manually put it back. I'm using a command or control arrow to move this into sort of a, a placeholder. There we go. And zoom in to make sure it's in the right place. Yeah, there we go. So what we need to do is actually use some bizarre and not exactly very kosher things to repaint the edges and as much of the background as we can. This is a really complicated example, and which is a great example because most of these aren't this way. They're a lot easier than this, but you can see what I'm going to have to do. It's really bizarre what we're going to have to do here, but it's fun. It, it kind of is. So what we got to do is uh, take the edges that are here and fill them in. Now what you can do, we, well, let's just say what we do, the, the basic tool we use for that is the clone stamp tool, which is an S. Clone stamp tool, again, we go back to the original layer, allows you to take an image from one place and put it into another. And so if I hold down Option or Alt, you see that funny looking target, that's where I'm going to be pulling data from, and I click. Now if I move down, you can see what I, where I might be painting, where it would start. So let's just say I want to start here. I'm going to zoom in again because it gets sort of hard to deal with otherwise. If I paint down, I get a nice black thing until this happens. Well, you're like, well, why are those things there? Well, that's where the end of this blank space was when I started. This blank space will do the same. Notice as I go up here, I get the edge of this up here because I Alt or Option clicked here. And as this would move up, I would get more black. So let's just try this. I'm going to come down here like this, and then it's going to split out. I'm going to do it again just to color it in black. And then I'm going to put my Alt uh, here, and that allows me, well, maybe actually a little higher. That allows me to kind of continue this post a little bit. Ooh, that's awful. I'm going to undo that. And then let's see. I'm going to put the Alt right on this line here, which would uh, maybe a little lower, so I don't get that junk, which allows me to sort of continue this down a little bit. Maybe not that. Uh, let's see, we're going to take this lady right about here, and eh, maybe that's a little bit harder than I want to deal with at the moment. We're definitely going to take this guy here. We're going to kind of, oops, maybe not. That's a, that's a rough one, too. Let's take this line here. Just to do as much of this cloning as possible. Because, as you can see, this is a really complicated situation here. Uh, actually, let's do this. Try to line up lines with lines as much as possible. Cool. Got this. Doesn't really matter there. Here's another one. Line. I'm holding down Option. I push it right on that line. And then that allows me to sort of cover that area there. Um, let's see, here's another one, a beautiful line. I'm going to click right here and just sort of continue this as well as this. Continue this. Well, that's going to get a little, a little get hard too. Until you get to a place where you're like, gosh, anything that I do cloning wise is going to start looking really weird. In fact, we could do this last one here. I put it on the line. I'm going to continue this line right here. And it's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be because, remember, this is the cutout. So now I've got a little leeway, not enough yet. But we're starting to see that I'm able to paint in this background. 
for the rest of this, we don't need to worry about all this detail. We just need to get a color, like this stuff here that I made, that mess. What we do then is we go to the eyedropper tool, which is an I, letter I, and we select a color. This is this sort of tan taupe. And then I'm going to go to the brush tool, B, and with a reasonable brush, just paint in what's here. And that's not perfect, you know, this is a gradient, obviously, and this other stuff isn't. Oh, here's another place I can take this shadow. Option, I can continue this shadow, which will help me. Ooh, then it gets weird because her leg's in the way. But that's okay. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit I, dropper, B. And we're just going to do a little paint. And then we're going to take this black, I, dropper, B, just a little paint like this. Maybe just paint a minute. And same with this lady here. We're going to go I, dropper, B, and just kind of continue this edge. I, dropper. B, just to kind of keep things a rolling, and maybe I'll just take this color, I, dropper, B. This is, again, probably one of the most complex, complex ones, I, dropper, B, here, and again, this is where his, his person is, so we don't have to be too picky about any of this. This up here is going to get a little tricky. I'm going to go back to the clone tool. I'm going to go right here, just there. You know, is this rocket science? Without question, no. This is, in fact, bad science. But all we really need to do is help with this background. And once we have a background that we like, then we can move on. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Just want to fix this black area here. Um, we've got this here. I think I'm just going to take a blue wash. Go like this. I, dropper B. Let's fix this gross thing that I did here. Kind of make this happen here. Fix this. It looks like it's getting black. I'm going to go here to eyedropper B. I've already colored all this in. And then this I know is here. I want to fix this up and get rid of this black chunk that's here. Cool. Now we're going to bring this back in, see how we did. And we know we, we can see that there's a little bit of a hole here we want to fix between her legs. Give our animator some space to be able to maneuver. In fact, we can just get rid of it all together. Right? Nobody knows the difference. Nobody cares. And then there's this thing right here, which we can help in the same way. Just doing a little of this, looking around here to make sure I got, oh no, there's her head right here. We need to fix that. She's got some space that she needs. Very complicated situation on this one, but I wanted to show you how to fix it if you get if you get into it. Cool. Now what can happen is if I go transform on this, they can actually start growing and not fall out of frame and, and get into well, obviously we can bring those down, but at least this gives our animators some help, some ways of looking at, oh, how do we move these? In fact, there's another issue right there. Let me fix that one. Yeah, easy to fix. And the more latitude you can give, oops, that's right, I need to be on that layer, the better. And there are some issue, there are some pains and issues and other issues where we just actually had to repaint the whole back, whole background. And if you end up in that kind of situation where you're like, man, I don't know if this is going to work at all, you know, we'll, we'll take it from there. But most of this stuff is going to be pretty simple to deal with. Yep. And so now if we wanted to zoom, we can do that. Oh, I see. This is, this is the issue. There's a little thing down here. That thing with her leg. You can see the latitude that we have now, which we didn't have before. Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, this is just baby simple stuff. This is like, you know, any real artist would be looking at this going, dude, you're nuts. This is never going to work. But I promise you, it does work as long as you're not a perfectionist about it. Oh, that was truly horrible. Back to the clone tool. 
and just adding different space to it. Put them back in. Now let's zoom. And by the way, I'm just using the transform. That's uh, Command or Control T. Now I got a lot of room. So as the camera zooms in, the editor has some parallax that they can deal with, and uh, and that's cool. Once you're done, so we were to cut them out. We were to cut them out. We'll do one more. Let me just see how we're doing here. In fact, let's do, let's do these cats over here. This one's probably pretty. This one's real easy. So we're going to go back to the layer, the big layer. Zoom in. Like so. Magic lasso. Start at the bottom for no particular reason. Click, 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 click. Here we're going to lose some of this black. Going to get that vomit in there. Click. You can probably leave that little gap. Click, click, click. Going around his head. Does a good job of figuring that out. I'm going to drop all the way down to the edge of frame. Click. And then come over like this. There's the circle. I click. And then I'm just going to use... Get a little closer. The regular lasso tool. I'm going to hold down Option to get rid of this junk right here, which is really weird. This looks all fine to me. I need some of his hair, please. I'm holding down Shift. Maybe a little bit more. Awesome. Looks pretty good on the whole. And then this step down here, where we'll just Shift and select all of that. And then I'm going to actually hit M because it's a hard square. Oops. And then hold down Option and then just make a nice line. This is the marquee tool, and then it makes that perfect, which is super dope. And I'm going to do the same thing with this edge, but this time hold down Shift. So I get it, everything to the edge. Cut. They're gone. New layer. Foreground. Right. Oops. Let's not type in Korean. As much fun as that is. Foreground. Right, folks. Paste. It's going to put it in a weird place. That's okay. I'm going to drag it over, drop it in where it should go. There it is. And now we know this edge is, this is probably far more what you're going to see. A real easy edge to figure out. I'm going to mute them. It becomes very simple to see what needs to happen here. Um, this is the layer option. So I tell you what, let's do this. Let's just right away start with eyedropper, brush, and just this is all the same color. It don't matter to us. Just give them as much latitude as possible. Eyedropper, this taupe color, brush, like so, without killing what's there. We don't want to remove that. Um, and then we're going to go eyedropper this color. Brush. Just here. And this is her head. So here we want to use the, the clone tool. I'm actually make this brush a lot smaller. So I can get a little more finite in here. Just this. Eh. Eyedropper. <laughs> Brush, make the brush smaller. I can't quite use the clone tool because there's just too much black in there, but I can do this just fine. And then I drop her this, B, continue. Looks like I'm missing part of her face here, which is a little bit of a drag. We'll probably want to actually grab that and put it in. See her little skin here? So we're going to go lasso, just get this part of her head. For whatever reason, we missed it. Perfect for you to see, because it happens. We're going to cut this. We're going to go back to foreground right, folks. Yeah, we missed it. Paste. There's her little facey face. Put her just in there like that. And we're going to merge these two layers. 
by shift selecting, right clicking, and merge layers. And now we relab relabel it again, foreground right, folks. Now she's got her face back, yay, hooray for our side. And this eyedropper back to the right layer. Paint, 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 yay, yay, yay. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Oops, I don't mean to do that either. That's all nice and black, which we will fix. You can also see you're actually making a nicer image because a lot of this is so compressed. And you can see that compression artifact there. You just want to take all of this and make it black so they can move it around if they need to. And you can just kind of imagine yourself as an animator figuring this out. Gee, if they had to move this, what would I, if they had to move this photo, what would I do? What would they need? In fact, this is a place we could do this without any trouble. Nice. Just keep on going here. This is another place where we can bring this eyedropper in because it's obviously not going to continue. Awesome. To do to do. And if you were really industrious, you could probably take the lasso tool, watch this, and just lasso the parts that you wanted to, to, uh, to deal with. Well, mark, like so. Oh, Mark, I'm so used to doing it using a pen. I'm using a mouse right now. It's really kind of rough. And then going to this tool, the paint bucket tool, making sure you've got the right, the right thing, and it just drops a nice blot in and then fix the rest with a paintbrush. And ain't no one going to know the difference, I promise. All right, so how do we do here? We've got a lot of this painted in. Let's put our folks back in. There they are. Pretty cool. Now, if I wanted to move them and zoom in on them, I got lots of latitude for parallax and motion and all kinds of things like this. Is it perfect? No, absolutely not. And we can fill, fill it in over here a little bit more. But would it work and would our animators be very happy that they didn't have to deal with this? Yes, absolutely. So that's kind of the gist. Now, how do we save this? Um, we've got our folks. They're all in now. And uh, obviously, I needed to cut those guys out, but we covered that. What we would do now is go save as. And the nomenclature, you would probably go you know, wherever you're saving it. This is uh, comic book stuff. Here is issue five. We're going to do something, and you can call this folder whatever you want. This will be motion comic pains. And it, it's kind of done a great job for you already. Uh, issue five, page one, dot pain one. Oops. So this is issue five, pain one, page one. Keep it as Photoshop, please, with all the layers. Everything else should be all right. And then save. And now the animators have the ability to use all of this. So once again, we're going to do the next pane just very quickly, just so you can see. This one is also going to be pretty easy. Um, in fact, let's do a really, really easy one. That's this one right here. Just so you know how we count them. So this is one here. One, two three, four, five, six. Not any other way. So left to right, top, top to bottom, left to right. Just so you're not like, wait, which ones are which? Okay, so we're going to do pane one, two, three, four, five. Zoom in. I'm going to go here. I'm using the marquee tool. I'm capturing it all. I copy. I go to new. It says make something from your clipboard. Yes, please. I create it. I paste. There she is. And now I'm going to magic lasso. Zoom in. You probably don't want to zoom in. Hi, thanks so much. 
Um, down we go. We don't need to worry about this because we're going to do a marquee for that. Click up. Oops. Up. Around. I'm going to go pretty fast so that you can see how fast this can really be. Click up all the way here. I'm going to go all the way up like this. Get the zero. Selection. I'm going to go to the marquee tool. I'm going to hold down shift. That's what we don't want. <laughs> kind of messes everything up. That's what we don't want. Okay, here's shift. I want all of this. Fine. I want all of this. Fine. I want all of this. Fine. And now we're just going to touch up a couple places with the lasso tool, not the magic lasso tool, but the regular lasso tool. I'm holding down shift. I'm holding down option to get rid of this little junk here that I don't want. I also have this section here, which I'm going to go back to the magic lasso, but now I'm going to hold down option to get rid of this interior section where her arm is making kind of a loop of darkness, which we really don't want. That'll work. So now this is a deselect, which is great. Back to the lasso tool to touch everything else up. We don't want this. I'm holding down option. Great. And then down here, that's the wall. We can leave that out. Everything else looks good except for this. Holding down option. Great. We cut. Uh, and in fact, you can just paste. You don't even have to make a new thing. Wow, put it in the right place. Fantastic. This is foreground girl. We mute her. And now we use the Oh, we go back to the layer. We use the option of the clone tool and we just build. Because it's actually doing the gradient for us, which we like. We're going to fix all that in a second. Cool. We're going to option click, get into this, option click, make a new one, option click. I'm just using different parts of this black that also gives me sort of a texture. Option click, option click, and now that it's all pretty much the same color, I I B. Uh, let's make the brush bigger again. Very big, in fact. So we can just go around like this. We don't want to touch this area here except with black, because that's where her arm hole is. We'll just blacken all of this. So our good friends have lots of latitude to move her against the background without erasing the background. We'll do the same here. You know, that was from our copy, which we don't really need. That looks like a repeat. We can avoid that. We will. And then the rest of this, we can just kind of help out with this. And now we can open up her again. There she is. And we have maximum flexibility. If I hit transform and I want to, <laughs> let's not move the layer, the background layer. Let's move the foreground layer. What do you say? Now we can move her. Obviously they wouldn't move her in this direction. They'd zoom her in this way and she can get much larger against the background. That's great. Go back to where you were, please. Um, in this case, because this is a weird line, just so you know, you can do this if you choose. Go to crop and just kill this little red line here a little bit. Because it looks stupid. And no one cares. Great. We save. Issue 5, page 1, pane. Did we say it was 5? I think so. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. And anyway, so that's how you do it. If you have any questions, you know, <laughs> obviously this is a little bit time consuming. That took, what, four minutes, five minutes, something like that on a pretty easy one. Um, what I'll be doing is giving you a breakdown uh, generally of what to cut out. So you'll have a pain-by-pain a, a, a pain breakdown of cut these folks out, cut that out. So for example, there isn't really anything to do here except just cut the black out and you don't even need to do that as a layer. 
just cut this black out on this one. Here, I'll zoom in here so you can see, because there's no real background here. It's just black. So all we would really need to do is just cut this stuff out. Same with him down here. He just has a black background. Just cut that out. Here we would cut her, him and her and probably her. The rest of these folks would stay the same. Here we'd cut her for sure, him, and that's it. And then this one, of course, is, well, I basically have already done this one, so y'all you know, don't have to. Just for fun, let's look at another one, just so you can get a feel. Uh, let's look at issue six for a second. What's the last page of issue six look like? So here, there's five panes total. We definitely cut her out with her sword and maybe this couch, maybe. In this one, we definitely cut her out and them. In this one, we cut both of them separately. In this one, he would get cut out and they would get cut out. Uh, actually, him, her, and those two would get cut out separately. So three different, three different. And then, of course, we would cut her straight out of the background. So. That'll take you, my guess, once you figure out how to get this up and running, take you about an hour to, per page. And uh, so that's how it goes. I'll put myself back on full here. So uh, hopefully that's uh, exciting and useful to you. Um, again, let, let me know if you've got any questions about it. But uh, there's 40 pages to do, and uh, we're excited to have you all aboard. Uh, we'll see you soon. And thanks for supporting Omega One and joining the revolution.